Hi, I'm Paul Sargent. Welcome once again to AP Euro Bit by Bit, a series in which I'm trying to break down modern European history into small bite-sized pieces so you can better understand it. Today, we're going to start with a little question for you about toys. Have you ever heard of the Toymaker Playmobil? Well, if you know a little bit about Europe, or if you've been a kid and just sort of run into them, you may know these Playmobil action figures. You want to know the fastest selling Playmobil action figure of all time? Martin Luther. So it's important to say that there are long-term and short-term causes for everything. And I think in my last video, I touched on some of the long-term causes of the Protestant Reformation. But Luther's break with the Catholic Church is going to be the major short-term cause of the Protestant Reformation. And that's why this Playmobil toy is still celebrated today and why everybody wants this. So first, let's talk about Luther's background. Well, as he grew up, his father wanted him to study to be a lawyer, and so he went into school to do that. But one night during a thunderstorm, when he was particularly scared for his life, he pledged to God that he'd become a monk if he, were, if he survived. And, well, he survived. And so he gave up the lawyer thing, he entered the Augustinian order, and became a monk. And while he was there, he worried and worried and worried about his own salvation. In fact, what he really worried about was the sacrament of penance or confession. In other words, penance is something that the Catholic Church has in place so that people could have their sins forgiven. But as he put it, the more I try to remedy an uncertain, weak, and troubled conscience with human traditions, the more I daily found it more uncertain, weaker, and more troubled. In other words, he didn't feel like he was getting really any, anything out of this. Well, in 1512, he becomes a university professor at Wittenberg teaching the Bible. And at the time, Catholic faith emphasized really two things to get into heaven. Number one, faith. And number two, good works. And as he looked into the Bible, Luther really couldn't find a biblical rationale behind that. And he saw in Paul's letter to the Romans the idea of salvation by faith alone, that faith in God is what will save a person, not these good works. And so he started to believe that the Bible should be the sole authority in all religious affairs. And that kind of set up what was to happen next. A guy named John Tetzel came to Germany selling indulgences in 1517. And indulgences are a way of buying salvation for individuals, both alive or dead. As he put it, as soon as a coin in the coffer rings, the soul from purgatory springs. And this upset Luther because he found no scriptural basis for the whole idea of indulgence. And so in 1517, he very famously nailed his 95 theses to the door of the church in Wittenberg, challenging the Pope to give him an explanation here, which the Pope completely didn't do. Now, this might not have been a big deal had the Pope responded to him, but the Pope didn't. And so his followers started taking down these 95 theses. They started, they translated them into German, and they printed thousands of copies of them and circulated them. And people in Germany had real political reasons to accept this. Now, in 1519, he was invited to debate his ideas in Leipzig with a guy named Johann Eck, a major Catholic, Catholic theologian. And in that, Luther was forced to go beyond the ideas of salvation by faith alone, and he was forced into a corner where he denied the authority of the popes and church councils. And Eck successfully aligned Luther's beliefs with those of Jan Hus, who had earlier been burned at the stake at the Council of Constance. So at this point, Luther was becoming more and more radical and published a series of pamphlets in 1520 that ended up getting him excommunicated by the church in 1521. He was also called to appear for the imperial diet at the German town of Worms, which translates really weirdly into the Diet of Worms. And here he appeared before the Holy Roman Emperor Charles V, asked him, uh, was asked to recant his beliefs and said very famously, here I stand, I cannot do otherwise, God help me. And so the council passed the Edict of Worms, which made him an outlaw within the Holy Roman Emperor. But the Elector of Saxony kidnapped him well, with his own consent 
and hid him away in Wartburg Castle for a year, where he wouldn't stop writing. He would continue to write pamphlets attacking the church, and he went one step further. He translated the New Testament into German so that everyone could read it. Now, only 4 to 5 percent of Germans could read, so the message was really spread from the pulpit and through vivid woodcuts that showed the Pope as the Antichrist. Luther also introduced music into the sermon, and his ideas began to spread. But there was op opposition, some people saying that he wasn't going far enough, some people saying he had gone too far, and the peasants that rose up in the German Peasants' Revolt of 1524, uh, thinking his was a social message, but it wasn't. And he told the German princes to shut it down, saying, quote, smite, slay, and stab, unquote, those stupid and stubborn pe peasantry who were rising up, and they did so, making him more tied to the princes than ever before. So it's time to talk about doctrine. Luther kept only two of the Catholic Church's sacraments, baptism and communion. Although in communion he didn't agree with the Catholic Church in the idea of transubstantiation, that there's a magical process that transforms the bread and the wine into the body and blood of Christ, but he did believe that there was a real presence of Jesus in those things. He also preached a priesthood of all believers, taking away the hierarchical nature of the church, and increasingly came to believe that they needed an organized church that would be run by the state. So princes would appoint priests, and princes would supervise church members. Worship services consisted of a liturgy in the vernacular, a sermon on the Bible, Bible readings, and hymns, some of which were written by Luther. So as Lutheranism spread across northern Germany, it led to lots of problems, including doctrinal uh, uh, decisions, including wars, and finally, uh, including the acceptance of Lutheranism. But that's the story for another day. In future episodes, we'll look at some of these movements, John Calvin's uh, Calvinist movement, um, the, the, the rise of the Presbyterians, the Anglican movement, the Anabaptists. We're going to sort of take a look at all of these. For now, understand that the Lutheran Revolt, as it becomes known, the beginning of the Protestant Reformation, began with one man's search for true answers to salvation. And it ends up with a fractured Europe that Europe, which had been at least unified by one thing, Catholicism, is no longer unified after Luther's done. So anyway, that's the basic idea of Luther's contribution to the Protestant Reformation. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you're finding these videos useful, please click subscribe so that you can get notified when I post new ones. And until next time, my name is Paul Sargent. Thanks for watching.